So you're likely here because you're interested in putting a golf simulator in your space. I've been running this setup behind me for the last three years. I started this build with just a vision of wanting one of these in my home. I did a ton of research and I wanna share that knowledge with you guys and show you exactly how to go about doing it. I almost went to the point where I bought one of these all-in-one box kits. I'm glad I didn't and I went with this custom route. Those all-in-one box kits have this one size fits all mentality and you essentially get a kit with the components in it that you have to make work in your space. I'm gonna show you how to make a setup that fits in your space perfectly instead of trying to make one work in your space. On top of that, a lot of those all-in-one kits, they don't even list what kind of components you're getting, like your computer, your graphics card, uh, the projector you're getting. And for the prices they're charging, you can build the exact same setup that fits your space instead of just trying to make it work in your space. So follow me along through this video as I'm gonna explain how I did this step-by-step step, and my hopes is it's gonna help you along your journey. And one thing to note is this is so much more than just a golf simulator. Yes, that's the main focus of this, but I'm in here watching, you know, movies, we do games, sporting events here. My kids use this thing all the time. My wife's in here doing at-home workouts. It has so many other uses besides just being a golf simulator. So I'm actually going to completely disassemble my entire simulator setup, and I'm gonna put it back together in a step-by-step -step process in this video to help you and show you that you can absolutely do this. So please make sure to like and subscribe. Any other questions that you have, feel free to comment them down below or reach out to us at pixelgolfco.com where we offer free consultations to work with you around the budget you have. Everything you see throughout this video is all gonna be in the descriptions down below. So without further ado, let's get started. You're gonna to wanna to start by measuring out the area where your enclosure is gonna go. You're gonna want the width, the height, and the depth. Some of these dimensions may not be important to you depending on where your enclosure is gonna go. I'm trying to fit mine into this nook, so I need to take all those dimensions into account. You can see in my specific space, I have ceilings that slope upward, and you're gonna want at least a 12 inch buffer space from the back side of the screen to the wall. If you're in the same situation, take your height measurement 12 inches from the wall. And then you're gonna to wanna to write all those dimensions down for the next step. Now that you have your dimensions, you're going to go to the description down below and click on the DIY tool. That's gonna to take you to Carl's Place website where we're going to design our custom golf enclosure. You'll be brought to this screen here and you're gonna to wanna to select the home golf simulator tab. There's one for impact screen only. If you're deciding not to do an enclosure base and you just wanna do an impact screen build, you have that option here. So click on home golf simulator. The first option you're gonna be presented with is for your screen material. I went with premium right out the gate. I've been using the premium material for about three years. It holds up exceptionally well. It has a nice tight woven pattern and it casts a really good image. So if you have the budget for it, I would highly recommend going with premium, but you also have preferred and standard as an option. And you'll see in the top left corner, your price will be reflected based on your selections to help you stay in budget. And you'll notice a thumbnail next to each of these screen materials, just giving you a representation of what that material looks like. In my case, I went with the premium, so I'm gonna select that for this example. The next screen is gonna be where we're gonna enter our dimensions. So we're gonna to go to the height box. I'm gonna enter 100 inches for my height and 134 inches for my width. And then you wanna to head to the aspect ratio dropdown. And as you'll notice, 16 by 10 and 16 by nine are grayed out. That's because based on the dimensions I provided, I cannot run a widescreen aspect ratio in my setup. So I'm gonna pick the next best thing, which is a four three. It's automatically gonna to default to the maximum size you can get in your space. So in my case, 88 by 118 inches. That's gonna be the actual screen size where the projected image is on. And if you look down here, it's gonna show you the actual enclosure dimensions. So 129 and a half inches by 99.7 inches tall. That's gonna fill that space almost perfectly. The problem is, is I need to leave some room away from the walls. And if you're in a similar case, this is something to consider as well. I wanna leave myself about five inches of space on the left and the right side as I store some items on the side of my enclosure. And I wanna add some protection from my walls. It also leaves that space to add that nice glow effect I put around the perimeter. So what I'm gonna do here is I want to slide the width bar down until my enclosure width is roughly 125 inches. That'll give me close to about five inches of space on either side of the enclosure. So I'm gonna slide this down and you'll notice because we're locked on that four by three aspect ratio, the height will adjust accordingly to maintain that. So I slid that bar until I left myself with 125 inches of enclosure width, which will give me that nice space that I'm looking for. You'll see the new enclosure height and the new viewable screen size. Once you get everything adjusted to where you want it at, hit next. 
This is where you're going to select your enclosure depth. It's my opinion that it looks much nicer to go with a shallower depth enclosure. If you go with too deep of a depth, it just kind of creates this big black box effect in the middle of your room. But again, pick the depth that works best for you. In my case, I decided to go with 33 inches as I have 48 inches of depth to work with and I want a little bit of buffer space behind my enclosure. And then hit next when you have your depth selected. This next step is gonna be where you're gonna add your accessories. You'll notice there's a pipe framing kit on here. This is the pipe that's needed to assemble your enclosure. Now you have the option to get it directly through Carl's Place, but they also give you an option to source it from your nearby hardware store. It's basically one inch EMT pipe. It's available at your Home Depots or your Lowe's. And if you go that route, you can save yourself a lot of money. Carl's will provide you with the dimensions you need ahead of time but you'll see if I add it through Carl's, it's gonna increase my cost by over $500. I was actually able to just source it from my local Home Depot for about $150. So this is an option to really save yourself some money. I'm gonna leave this unchecked for now as I sourced it myself. The next option is for a foam insert kit. This is a protective foam that goes around the perimeter of your screen and just adds a little bit of protection from the framing of the enclosure. This is something you can add after the fact should you decide you need it. If you hit the ball pretty good and you're not worried about missing the screen by that much, you can probably leave that off, but again, you have the comfort to add this later. The back cover kit essentially adds a blackout back cover to the rear of your enclosure. If you have a case like mine where you're putting it in front of a window, or maybe it's in a room with a lot of ambient light coming in from the backside of the enclosure, which can affect your image quality, this is something you may want to add on. But again, just like the foam insert kit, you can add this on after the fact, should you decide you want to do it later. The next option is for eight foot net wall extensions. These just Velcro onto an existing strip that's already Already built into your enclosure and just like the other two items you can add these on after the fact they just add another element of protection that you can throw up real quick if you have lower level golfers using the simulator they also have safety baffles they basically add further protection for high lofted shots that go into the top part of the enclosure the last item is golf simulator curtains these are retractable so you can kind of create that deep enclosure look and then when you're not using it you can slide them back um, they're also helpful if you have a window next to it but go ahead and just pick any accessories that you want to to add to your kit and then hit next. So that's basically it as far as the enclosure goes. We designed our custom enclosure to our exact dimensions and specifications we wanted. There's gonna be other steps moving forward if you wanna add on launch monitors, projectors. I don't want this video to get too long and I actually have a video where I do a walkthrough of using this tool completely to build out a whole setup. So feel free to check that out on the channel. But for now, we're just gonna next through the rest of these steps and just focus on the actual enclosure. I've designed a custom enclosure to fit my space exactly how I wanted to. My price is $1480, but again, I added the premium screen. Your price will change based on your dimensions and what screen material you added. And the only other thing that I had to add to mine was EMT, which I sourced locally again for $150. So for the money, you're getting a full custom build and it's really hard to beat. Once you get that all done, you can go ahead and check out and move to the next step. So once you get your kit, basically they have such a plethora of options that you'll get some things that may not be included. So I decided not to do an unboxing um, because based on your build, you might have items that I don't have in my specific setup or extra connectors, things like that. So I think the most important thing here is just to do a quick um, breakdown of just showing you how easy it is to install it. I actually did it all myself. You can see I sourced my own EMT pipe, so I didn't get that from them, but all the connector pieces, the screen, Everything else was included in my package and it shipped really fast. I got it in like three or four days. I'm kind of just doing a time lapse of putting it together. If you want a video tutorial of how to put the enclosure together, Carl's actually has one that I'll link down below, but the instructions do cover pretty much 99% of it. Um, as you can see at this point in the step, I am just checking to make sure everything is square and test fitting it into place. This is the enclosure framing without the back cover piece. I actually added the back cover piece after, so here's me just adding those extra pieces. If you didn't get the back cover, you won't have this little extra piece that sticks out of the back at the end, so just keep that in mind. Now I'm just putting the canopy in place. I think the most important thing here is just to anchor it to one side and then pull tension to the other side. You wanna just take your time. I like to put a few bungees in place while I Velcro the strip in. I see some people just rush through this process and you're left with a wrinkled canopy. If you take your time, everything will look nice and neat. The more time you take, the better it's gonna look in the end. So if you do it right and you go all the way around the perimeter, once you have the bungees in, you should have nice, clean, flat lines all the way across and it just makes for a much better look. 
Now you can grab your screen and find the Carl's Place logo that's actually at the top left corner. You can just start by pre-feeding two bungees through the rear of the eyelet, and this will help you, especially if you're hanging it by yourself like I am. You wanna make sure your screen doesn't touch the ground, but just the corners into place, putting one bungee across the top bar and one across the side and you wanna repeat that for the right side as well. Now that the screen is roughly in place, go ahead and locate the cable at the bottom of the screen and feed it in through the eyelets on the bottom corner pieces. You're gonna to wanna to grab the tensioning bolt and turn it roughly three to four times on both sides. And once you have it in place, go ahead and grab a Allen wrench and just tighten it down evenly from left to right. Now you wanna grab two of the supplied zip ties and you're gonna to wanna to feed them through the lower eyelets and tighten them down in this orientation on both sides and just make sure that you have an even gap on both the left and the right side. Now you can start zip tying in the remaining eyelets. You just wanna make sure to do it evenly on the right and the left side, keeping that nice even gap and even spacing from the left to the right, that way the screen isn't shifted. And then on the top, you wanna to tighten it down just enough so that the screen sits just flat across the bottom of the ground. And again, you can add more tension to those tensioning bolts uh, should you need to, but the whole thing should look nice and clean all the way around. And the lower cable should be tight enough to not let a ball through. And again, in my case, I opted for the rear blackout cover, so I'm just doing a time-lapse assembling that here, but it's really easy. Everything just Velcros into place. Another addition I added to my simulator is using pipe insulation on the front of the enclosure. It adds a nice professional clean look and it actually works as the mounting place for the LEDs as well and offers a bit of protection. You can buy these at your local big box hardware store for about two bucks a piece and you also need two corner pieces for the top corners. The corner pieces weren't cut on the correct side but it was easy to just take a straight razor and make the cut I need to fit them on the corner of the enclosure. Installing the foam insulation is really easy. Everything just fits snug into place. There's no glue or adhesive needed um, so just take your measurements and work your way all the way around the border another helpful tip is there's a pipe that's exposed in the inside tops so you can use an extra piece of that foam and just unvelcro that flap put it on the pipe and velcro it back into place if you decide to add the leds around the perimeter this is pretty straightforward you're just going to purchase an led strip i have the one i use down in the description below it's wi-fi enabled and you can control it with your phone and it has just about every color you can think of it just simply pills and sticks to the back side of that foam and you wanna make sure to get it as close as possible to the edge of the foam so you don't see it from the front side. Just take your time working it into place. You wanna make sure it's nice and straight all the way around so that glow is even, and keep in mind where the outlet is for the power source. Now that you have that pipe insulation installed and the LEDs attached, if you decided to go that route, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get those plugged in and everything is working as it should, and then go ahead and push your enclosure into the place where it's gonna sit, and make sure everything fits as expected before moving to the next step. Now, if you opted to get the additional foam insert kit, go ahead and install that now. You're basically just gonna put it in place. Keep in mind the orientation, they'll be marked for which side's the right, left, and top and you wanna carefully Velcro those into place. If you decided not to get this, go ahead and just Velcro those flaps. There's already a mounting point there, and remember you can add these on later, but just take your time all the way around the perimeter, making sure everything looks nice and neat. Now that you have your enclosure all set up in place, you can think about what you wanna do for the turf. You can do something quick and easy, just like putting down a pretty cheap hitting mat, um, and that'll kinda of get you going, but if you wanna do like what you see in my build, Basically, you're gonna to head to the descriptions down below and you're gonna purchase the one inch gym puzzle mat. I went this route and I'm actually really happy I did. It's really easy to install. You can kind of cut it to the size that you need to and everything just locks in place and you can cover a really large area for not a lot of money. It's also super easy to take out should you need to. You don't have to attach this to the ground. If you have a large enough surface like I have, everything kind of stays in place. And basically what I did for the top is I just went to my local turf supplier and I bought outdoor putting turf. I tried a few different ones out um, before I found the one that I liked, but that just essentially drapes over the top and it creates a really realistic feel like you're walking on actual grass. It is a bit too firm, however, to hit off of, but I'm gonna show you in the next steps how to add a hitting insert. So for the hitting insert, you want something with a little give to it. I actually made my own custom one. Check the channel out and I have a DIY about how to build that exact one. And you can use the same turf you pick for the top so everything matches. But basically, no matter what you pick, you're gonna do the same process. You can see I already have the cutout for mine, but I'm doing this just as a demonstration. So you're gonna wanna take your hitting mat or hitting insert you chose and you're gonna to wanna to trace it out onto the turf using a white chalk washable marker. I'll link that down below as well. Then use a straight edge razor to cut out that shape that you traced onto your turf. Then you'll have the exposed gym mat. 
in which case you can take that same washable white paint marker and you're gonna wanna trace that same pattern onto the gym mat, then roll back your artificial turf, and then you're gonna to want to unclip the gym mat where that template is traced onto to make cutting it out easier. Now just take that piece and then using a nice sharp razor, go all the way around the traced out shape, making sure to have nice clean cuts all the way around. And once you get that all cut out and removed, you can reinstall the piece back where it goes. And then you can simply just roll your turf back into place and check and make sure everything is nice and straight. And then go ahead and drop in your hitting insert or hitting mat and test it out. Now, if you wanna add putting cups to your build like you see in mine, that's pretty much the same process as what we just did with the hitting insert. You're just basically gonna trace the shape out. I'm also gonna put in the descriptions down below where I got the putting cups and this tool I'm using in the video. Um, but I'm using a scrap piece just to show you. It's basically the same process. You cut out on the turf and then you move it back, trace that out onto the gym mat, and then you're gonna insert those cups from underneath and then just roll the turf back over the top of it. And then you're basically ready to hit a few putts. Another great thing about the gym puzzle mat is in the beginning of my sim setup, I was running Amiibo Plus, which requires about 16 feet of space. So rather than making a 16 foot piece of turf, I just made this quick little attach on lily pad that kind of sticks off the back and uses the same putting turf. So this is a great option if you have that launch monitor. One more addition I made to my build is by incorporating a rough strip to create a fringe. This also helps hide some of the wires that I have in my setup. I used some half inch gym mat I had laying around and bought a piece of turf from Lowe's for about $20 for a one foot strip. If you have questions about anything you've seen so far in the build, head down to the description and go to our website pixelgolfco.com as we offer free consultation. As for the projector, I'm currently running the Optima GT 1090 HDR, but there are so many options you can choose from and this can honestly be a video all on its own. Uh, the GT 1090 HDR has been a great projector. It's recently been replaced by this ZH450 ST, but the important thing here is to pick a projector that fits your budget and most importantly, your space. Some projectors have a longer throw ratio than others, but I'm going to include a link in the descriptions down below to a free projector calculator. You can see me using it here. I'm putting in the GT 1090 HDR, which is what I have, but you would basically pick the model that you're considering getting. And what you wanna do is you wanna go to the drop down and on the image size, you want to be focusing on the height. The width isn't that important. That could be adjusted through your graphics card on your computer. But basically, you want to enter the height in inches of your screen size. Mine was 86 inches, so I'm entering that height here. And you can see the tool is telling me that the throw distance will be 6 feet 4 inches. And if I switch it to ceiling mount, that doesn't change the throw distance. And that's roughly about where mine is mounted from the screen. And just to show you that the width doesn't matter, you can see I was on 16 by 9 aspect ratio, but switching it to a 4.3 doesn't change the throw distance. As far as mounting, you'll have a general idea of where to put the projector but again you just want to kind of mock it up and get it to where it fills the screen top to bottom completely and then put your mount in that location. The width can be adjusted from the graphics card on your computer but we'll cover that in more detail in a later video. As far as the computer you use, there's a lot of options you can choose here, and it really depends on what type of software you plan on running. You can get by with some softwares on something as basic as an iPad, where some ultra graphic simulation softwares require something much more powerful. I went with a gaming laptop instead of a desktop, as I wanted to have the portability with mine. And so far it's handled every single software I can throw at it at the absolute highest graphic settings. I'll put a few options I'd recommend in the descriptions down below. Or feel free to shoot us a message at pixelgolfco.com and we can try to find something that works for you. As far as launch monitors, luckily and unluckily we live in a world with so many options to choose from and the one you pick is really going to depend on your budget, the space you have available and where it's going. I originally started out with using something as simple as a Mevo Mini, then I tried a Skytrack out, um, eventually had a Mevo Plus in the very beginning of my actual sim setup. I got a chance to have a GC2 for a little bit, uh, even a GC quad come through. And ultimately what I settled on in the end was a Launch Pro, which is now unlocked and also known as a GC3. The Launch Pro just made so much more sense for me and my setup. It's been extremely reliable. I like the portability of it, just like the laptop. And I didn't need the data overload that the GC quad was providing. But one thing all these models have in common is no matter which one I had, I had absolutely no regrets and it was an absolute blast. So just pick the one that works best for you. So that is basically it. I really hope this video helps you along in your journey. If you have any additional questions, feel free to comment them down below. Or again, you can visit our website, pixelgolfco.com, and we can help you from there working with the budget you have. The biggest
biggest thing to take away from this video is that you can definitely do this yourself. You can build something truly to your exact specifications that you like within your budget. If you found this information useful, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. It tells us that you like the content and it helps us to create further content for you down the road. The reason I started this channel is years ago, I wanted one of these things in my house. I had no idea where to start. I put in a ton of time, a ton of research. A lot of it was really trial and error and just learning and growing from there. And I got to the point where I was in the position to really help others along the way in their journey. I've gotten so many positive messages from a lot of you over the years saying how I helped you guys along and that's really the goal of this channel. Again, everything you see in my setup will be in the descriptions down below. And if you're a subscriber to the channel, you will be entered in our future giveaways that are coming up. So thanks again, everybody. I'll see you guys on the next one.